But if you want to have ridiculous insight <clears throat> and you want to have the the prowess that you see me demonstrated and you see my students demonstrating in their examples, you, they're out there recording themselves doing it. They're on their own little YouTube channels in their own little lane doing their own thing. And I'm not telling them to get in those trades. And man, that fucking feels amazing. It feels amazing seeing them able to do that. Like, I, I love showing my sons. I show my wife, look at this guy. Look, he just did that there. Look, and then when I share my examples, I'm recording. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what trades I'm taking. And then I put it up there and then everybody comes behind me. Look at this. I took the same trade and they've recorded their same shit. There's no fucking way you can go back in time. Record all that compressed data, all that delivery and price, annotations, all the bullshit. There's no way that can be faked. That means there was a transfer of knowledge from me to them. That's proof of concept. That is proof the shit works. And it means if they can do it, you can fucking do it. And don't let no fucking clown anywhere tell you you can't. Because I'm telling you, you can. You absolutely can. I've made this obtainable for all of you. Yes, it takes work. Everything does. Every fucking thing takes work and effort. It's going to be a hard press for some of you. It's going to be easier for others. And you have to find out what it's going to be for you. But you just simply got to dig your heels in. Dig your heels in say, fuck it. You know, I'm going to put up with whatever I got to put up with. I already know it's going to be hard because if it ain't rough, it ain't right. That's just the way it is. Because if it was easy, 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 everybody could do it. And you don't see that. You don't see it. So you have a full, complete year if you do it right, optimally. You know, six months of back testing and, and tape reading, and then three to six months of consistently aiming for a demo results or you know a track record if you want to go, go that, so far as to say that for six months that are consistently profitable. Then, then and only then are you prepared mentally, emotionally, to even consider. And I'm not saying that you should do it, but then is when you should consider putting real money in. And that's a decision you're going to make. There's no ICT lesson that says, okay, this is the deciding factor. This is when ICT says I should do it. No, you are going to make that decision. Some of you may never do, do it. You may be too scared and that's fine. That means you can't do it. But if you're good in demo, you can run signal services and you make money doing that. I got students that are doing it. They're not even in a live account. They can't take the personal risk on themselves. That's their weakness. So what they've done is, okay, I'm good in a demo, but I can't do well when it's money because I'm, I'm, I I take the losing trades and it affects me mentally. Okay. Well, why don't you just run a signal service? Because if you're confident in your demo and you know it's not going to hurt you, there's no kryptonite there. And if you're consistent, there it is. And they're running that. There it is. <laughs> I mean... Is there anything wrong with that in my opinion? Fuck no. No, because if the people that are subscribing to someone like that, they already know if it's going to work, they're going to keep subscribing. If it doesn't work, they're not going to subscribe and continue. So everybody's getting what they're looking for. There's a lot of people out there that can't trade. They can't trade. They can't do the, the pushing of the button. They can't absorb the uncertainty that is inherent. in this industry and there's a lot of uncertainty and it stems internally because if you can take yourself out of the equation all you're doing is looking for a market that's going to go up or go down and where is it going to go up to or where is it going to go down to and where's the market at right now has it created an imbalance has it taken stops there's a, that's the questions you're asking but see what you do and i did when i was younger i bring all our horse shit to it wife left me I don't feel well. I'm not able to bench press this much. My friends are doing better than me in their job. Fucking Carl's got the market spot again this month. Everything's going to be a plague and a distraction. And you're going to bring all that nonsense into your decision making. And you're going to clutter up this whole thing. 
And I think, I personally think that subconsciously, I think we as humans like to do that because it provides us a perfect excuse why we fail. Oh, of course we're going to fail. I have all these other things to contend with. No, you didn't. You brought that shit into trading. You got to find a way to be able to remove all that, that outward influence, these, these outward factors that will plague anybody. Doesn't matter if you have a high aptitude in terms of intelligence or if you're just a common person like I was when I came into this. I, I mean, I, I'm not an intellectual giant. I'm not, I'm not superior in, in my intellect. I'm, I'm, I'm a blue collar guy. Like I'm straight out of freaking Middle River, Maryland. I mean, I'm like that is the definition of blue collar. They called our, they called our neighborhood Cardboard City. Literally, it doesn't exist anymore. They built um, new. I think it was Ryan Homes or Rylan Homes. I think they put uh, those over there, right across the street from uh, Middle River School. My address as a kid was Thirty Henderson, and it was literally right across the street from Middle River. But you, you, you got to find a way to keep that stuff from coming in. You can't invite it. We're about halfway there, folks. <laughs> Hope you packed the fucking lunch. Know and respect the risk. Okay, and now obviously, that's the part everybody wants to ignore. I, mean, I just want to win. Just show me how to win. I don't want to know about a stop loss. I know, I know I should use a stop loss, ICT, but I don't know where to fucking put it, so I'm not going to use it. And then when you blow your account or you go in severe drawdown, what do you feel then? Weigh out that right now. Okay. If you haven't even started pushing a button yet, weigh out the 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 pressure of fearful of knowing where to put a stop loss versus not using a stop loss and regretting it and how bad it can be before you either get out or they margin call you. Which one do you want to suffer through? Obviously, you want to flounder in the beginning of learning where to put a stop loss. And that's the benefit of giving yourself time. Folks, This that stuff is a complicated thing. You can't just simply say, here's the rules, because I've already done that. I've already shown you how the, where to put a stop loss. The fair value you got, where's the high of the fair value you got? Okay, if you allow yourself in terms of the risk, to have it to the swing high behind the high that forms the fair value gap, I'm going to use the swing high. But if I know everything's in my favor, I'll use the high of the candle that makes the fair value gap. And that's where my stop loss is. And you see how the market performs. Look at my examples this week. Don't look at the total amount of money that was being risked. Look at the precision placement of the stop loss and how it was never in jeopardy. I was not sitting there watching those fucking trades thinking, I hope it doesn't hit my stop. The stop's there to do its job. It's being paid to do its job. Get me out at that price because I don't want to be in it going higher or lower if it's moving against me. I'm not worrying about that stop loss. I'm focusing on the price moving in where I'm expecting it, the draw on liquidity. I'm focusing on is the market continuously giving me all signatures and signs that it's doing what I expect it to do. Is it breaking with it? If I'm bearish, I want to see up close candles being broken. I want to see price digging through up close candles to the left. That means it's eating into all that shit. And I want to see up close candles. I mean, I, mean, I think I may have said this wrong. Let me, let me take that step back here. Yeah. If I'm bearish, I want to see down close candles being broken because down close candles in a bullish market, I, I'll look for opportunities for that to support price either through mitigation or outright order block. So I'm looking for down close candles to be driven through in price action when I'm bearish. Because otherwise, if you start seeing these down close candles to the left starting to support price, then you might need to suffer through a retracement or it could have made its low. So I'm looking for those signatures while price is delivering in my trade. I'm focusing my attention there. I'm not worrying about or panicking about the stop loss being hit. And that's where all of your mindsets are. As a new trader and those that don't want to put a stop loss, you know if you put that stop loss order in there. And you may have a limit order in to get out above or below based on whatever you're doing if you're going long or short. You'll put a limit order in to get out. 
but you're afraid to use that fucking stop loss order because you know you're doing this too soon. But you can't help it. You want to get a win. You want to make money because you think that that's going to be the, the, the decision maker or the confirmation that what you're doing is the right thing. When really what you're doing is, is you're solidifying bad habits. You are ensuring that you're going to be a piss poor trader forever. That long pause is intended. I wanted you to hear that and register. If you trade without a stop loss, like a dumb Yahoo, you are setting yourself up for inconsistency. I promise you, look at everybody out there that's trading without a stop loss. They, they, they're, they're emotional. They flip out. When it's wrong, it's fucking really bad. And they can't fix it. You can't go back and, oh, uh, let, me, let me limit the, the, the amount of drawdown I took. No, it's too late. So you have to have that time to learn how to trust yourself. Stop listening to these fucking clowns selling courses and bullshit, trying to get you to be a part of their groups, following their bullshit flawed logic. That you, you just don't use a stop loss or put a stop loss so, so tight that it's unreasonable. And or they're saying, do live trading sooner because ICT's an old man and he's a fuddy duddy and he's setting his ways and there's newer ways to do it. There's new technologies. There's new ways to get in there and start making money right away. Those technologies may very well be valid, but you still are you and you are bringing in to this equation your frailties as a human being, your character flaws, your personality disorders. Everybody has something wrong. That hasn't been dealt with. Nobody walked into trading with their shit right. Nobody. They discover a lot of the things that they didn't notice about themselves. And the better ones, the traders that are consistently profitable, they're the ones that have done the work and the painful pruning in their personal life, in their mindset, their thought processes, all these things have been augmented to get themselves in alignment with allowing success. But you don't see what you're doing. You're, you're resisting success by doing all the wrong things, thinking you're protecting yourself from the things that you've identified that is fearful, which is being wrong or losing money or ultimate failure. And that is avoided by doing the very things I'm telling you to do. You have to learn how to encounter, well, those personal wrestling matches is where you you don't like what you feel about yourself. You, you may be wrestling with the fact that you think it should have been easier for you to learn by now. I have so many students that have went through that and then look back and say, you know what? I made a big deal about it then. And I felt like it was longer than it really was. And now I'm looking back. It's like I made a bigger deal out of that shit than it really was. And I kept myself in that situation longer because I grieved about it should have been sooner. It should have been sooner instead of just doing the fucking work and getting you through it. Like when you join the military, boot camp, they put your ass through it for six weeks or so. And look, soft bodies going in there, they're not soft bodies after six weeks. <laughs> uh, they're not soft bodies and they're ready to rip your shit up. They're salty. They're ready to get out there and beat somebody's ass because the drill sergeants or whatever put it on them. So they're going to deflect and put it on whoever they say is the enemy. Well, you need to go into your development with the same mindset. It's going to suck. You're not going to have that sugary snack every day. You're going to have to defer all those little things on the weekend and start studying and doing those things that are uncomfortable, that may not pan out for you right away, but the end result over time will. You got to just stay with it. But you have to respect that risk. And if you don't know what your personal risk percentage is, what's the maximum that you can really suffer? And you're going to like, oh, I can take 2%. Some of you younger guys, well, ICT said he did 5%, so I could, I could do 5%. Yeah, I could do that. No, you can't. No, you can't. If you had an account with $100,000, you feel rich because you have $100,000. But if you lose $5,000, you're 
you start thinking, wait a minute, that's 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 five thousand dollars. I mean, I could have done this and that, and all of a sudden you start thinking about, oh, you got buyer's remorse now. <laughs> um, if I wouldn't have done that trade, I could have bought. Uh, this or that. I could have done that project around the house. I could have put the deck on the back porch and I could have done this and done that and I could have fixed this in the car. What are you doing? You're bringing in weaknesses and character flaws. Instead of saying, okay, I did that wrong. I risked 5%. That's stupid. It's over leveraging. Don't do that. Don't let the industry standard in all the books and even I have parroted this stuff. 2% is not optimal. Anybody that says it's optimal is full of shit. They're lying and they're probably not even profitable. Your risk percentage, the maximum of that risk for your total equity in your account, it might only be one half of 1%. And you can trade very fluidly in the marketplace and not feel any kind of unnerved, no second doubts about what you're doing while you're trading where your stop loss is. If you get stopped out, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to hurt you. And a half of 1% is easy to make back. Really, really easy to make that back regardless of whatever your equity size is. So the secret sauce in this whole business is knowing you, how you are going to derail yourself. Are you easily swayed by other people's opinion, even mine? You might be looking at a market and I have students that have discovered this in my private mentorship. They have an uh, the idea about a marketplace, okay? And because I'm using higher time frame, my my outlook is a little bit longer term than them if I'm talking about a daily chart. But they might have an idea about taking a trade that would be opposed to that idea. Not, not necessarily nothing wrong with that, but because their mentor was saying he believes or I believe that it's going to go here, it made them second guess their own analysis. And then then that trade they were going to try to take panned out and my stuff still ended up going there but days later my entire time frame for bias theirs was i'm taking money out of the marketplace tomorrow in the next session but because i was giving my analysis they were tripped up by my opinion my opinion should not have any influence over yours once you have your own model you should not be subscribing to whatever I think is going to happen in the marketplace. That's the whole decoupling that's required for you to be an independent thinker. And that's why I, that's one of the benefits of me not doing active mentoring now. I'm just answering questions and finalizing our, our time together as the private mentorship group. And ultimately that, you know, that will move, move aside and they'll integrate themselves with this community here. But you'll see them rise above everyone else in this group because they've been trained a little bit better than all of you are. And that's not something you should be upset about because you have me still here actively teaching and don't be upset about that. You're not, you're not going to get in and what they've had. You're not going to get that. So just accept it. There's nothing wrong with you not being a part of that. They took the risk and took the initiative to get in it when it was avail made available to them and they did it. <clears throat> not all of them are successful, but I have a lot of them that are. And the ones that are still struggling have now found their development increasing. And some of them are profitable now because of what you watched and had for free just this year. So I know it's profitable. I know it's helping other people and even my other students that were struggling. But your risk percent, you need to know what that is. And you're not going to know what that is until you spend six months, ideally, tinkering with it. Where have you worked with it? Because 2%, you know, it's not a lot, but if you have 2% and then you cut the loss and you risk 1% and you lose and you risk a half percent of that, okay, you know, that's three and a half percent. Three and a half percent doesn't feel like a lot, but what happens if you take another loss and you're stuck at one quarter percent and you have to do that over and over and over again? It will not run your account down like 2% every single time. But if you start with a half a percent and you take a loss, it's going to feel like a mosquito bite. It's a nuisance. You wish it didn't happen, but it's really not bothering you. But if you keep going back into it and scratching it, it's going to do what? Potentially get infected, create an open sore. And that's what you end up doing when you start treating your losing trades like a mosquito bite. You want to just keep itching it. It's done. It's damaged. Let it go. Just leave it alone. Ignore it.
move on to the next thing.